Hello, my most amazing artists. It's lovely to see you again. If we haven't met, my name is Miss Janizek and I'm your crazy art teacher. Today, what we're going to do is we're gonna get started on our shoe bug project. It's gonna go over line and color, and we're also gonna be able to use crayons and watercolor paint. So get all your stuff. First thing that you need is a pencil and a piece of paper big enough for your shoe to fit on. Let's do some line review. Now we learned our lines in kindergarten, but it helps to have a common language. So we're going to make sure that we're calling the lines the same thing. That way when we're communicating, we know what each other are talking about. So our lines that we have right now, we've got a straight line, easy peasy. We've got a curved line. Now I say curved because lots of things in our world are curved, including rainbows in our world, some letters have a curve to them, some numbers have a curve to them. So it's very helpful to know, it's just a curved line. We've got a wavy line, okay? Think about the water when you're in a boat or in a canoe, or if you're in the bathtub and it makes some waves. Wavy line, okay? My personal favorite, the zigzag. It's very sharp, like shark teeth or mountains, okay? This one I want you to imagine we're riding our bicycles and we come across a road that's got a whole bunch of bumps in it, it would feel pretty bumpy. So yeah, it's our bumpy line. If you were to draw someone's hair with this line, what kind of hair would they have? Most definitely curly. Not like my hair today though. This one we see in real life all the time. All the time, especially when we're in the car or on the bus. It's the dashed line also could be called the broken line because technically it is a whole bunch of little straight lines with a little bit of a space or broken in between them. I bet you already know the name to this one. It's called the bumpy line or the <laughs> dotted line. I haven't had enough coffee today, I don't think guys. The dotted line. Now those dots don't have to necessarily be a small circle. They could be anything. They could be hearts, they could be triangles, but we would still probably call them a dotted line. Next we have at the top of her fortress, locked away, the princess is inside of the castle. It's our castle line. And although this looks like a big caterpillar, it's just a fuzzy line. <laughs> so yeah, now that we've talked about all of our lines, we've got straight, curved, wavy, zigzag, bumpy, curly, dashed, dotted, castle, and fuzzy, let's talk about how to make our shoe bug, which is the example that I have right up here. Hi. So the next thing that you need to do is put your paper on the floor on a hard surface, probably not on the carpet, and then put your shoe right in the middle, tracing while holding that pencil straight up and down. You might have to pick it up and continue on to the other side, but you want to get the shape of your shoe on your whole paper. Okay, friends, now the next thing to do is to fill this all up with some bug parts. What are some parts of the bugs that you remember? Like the eyes. You can make eyes whichever way you want. Whichever way you want. Maybe you want to give them some eyelashes. Maybe you don't. Up to you. Go ahead and give them a mouth. And you could use a certain type of line for a mouth, or you can actually make a mouth. You know that I love zigzag lines. Next thing that we can do, we can add some legs. Insects have at least six legs. Now, if I'm going too fast or you need to pause to draw your part, you totally can. Or you could watch the whole thing and just do it at the end. Maybe you want to add some wings. I don't know, whatever you want. But the inside of the bug, here's what I want you to do. I do want you to fill it up with those types of lines that we talked about earlier. Make sure to draw your lines kind of big because we will be tracing these lines with crayon. Maybe some straight lines. Maybe some diagonal lines, because maybe it has a stinger. And then maybe, maybe I'll just do some dots in circle form. There. Now, add some antenna. 
Maybe it goes off the page and comes back on. Now it's time for crayon. After you have all of your pencil done, now it's time for the crayon. What you need to make sure you do for the paint to also work is to press hard with your crayon. Now, if you press too hard, it's probably going to break, but you want to make sure that wax is wedged really good into that paper. You might also want to go over it a couple times just to make sure. Here's me at lightning speed going over the details and the lines of my bug. I even broke a crayon there. But then it's time for painting. After you have all your crayon done, go ahead and wake up that paint with just adding a little bit of water. That way all of your paint is ready to go. After you have all of your paint ready to go, choose one color and you're gonna paint the whole inside of that bug with long, smooth paint strokes. Also, if you notice that your crayon is getting covered up by the paint and it's kind of going away, it probably just needs some more water. So make sure to just add water to your brush and then you'll be good to go. Right here, I'm talking about the parts of the paintbrush. We've got the bristle, the danger zone, and the handle. Make sure in the danger zone that there's no paint and no touching of those fingers. Our hand should only be holding on to the handle of the paintbrush. I'm also going slow around details that I wanted to make a different color or to not get any color in there as well. If you used a white crayon, you'll notice too that the white crayon shows up when you paint. Make sure your brush is nice and clean for when you start the outside of your shoe bug. Again, choose another color, a different color. You don't want it to match your bug. You want your bug to stand out. So doing a different color will help that color stand out. I use complementary colors, which means they are across from each other on the color wheel. We will talk more about that later. But orange and blue are across from each other, so I thought it would help my bug stand out. I cannot wait to see all of your shoe bugs. Make sure to post a video or a picture of it when you are done. Bye guys.